Okay, my learning objective here is I can create a bar chart. So first thing you're going to do, I want you to turn to your partner and I want you to tell them what is a bar chart. Pause. A bar chart is a way of expressing data. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Jordan? Well, let's say I've got some information and I want to give it to you, okay? So for example, here is my information. This is how well different ice creams are selling in my shop. I've got strawberry, vanilla, banana, chocolate, and raspberry ice creams. Now, I've got to make a decision. I'm running this business and I can't afford to keep all the ice creams. I can only afford to have three ice creams in my shop. Now, I could look at all the numbers and I could start to get a little bit confused. But if I put the information into a bar chart, as I've done here, it becomes really obvious which ice creams I should keep. Obviously, the chocolate is selling well. I'm going to keep the chocolate on stock. The banana is not selling at all. I'm going to get rid of the banana. There's no point in me buying banana ice cream if nobody is going to buy it off me. It's a waste of money. So I look at the other bits of information. Vanilla and raspberry are both kind of selling the same. Strawberry is selling a little bit worse. And actually, for me as a business, it's not worth me buying all this strawberry ice cream if not enough people are going to buy it because the ice cream is going to go off after a while. So I stop buying the strawberry. Now my business becomes streamlined. I've only got the products that are selling well, I make more money. The bar chart allowed me to see that information more clearly, okay? So it was a really good way for me to run my business. Let's say I am going to, I will, if I've invented a new product, okay? I've invented something really revolutionary. It's called Product X, okay? It's called Product X. And you know what? It's great. I've been spending my life since university working on this. Brilliant. Now, on the market is already is products A, B and C. Now, I need some money for product X and I want to go and sell it around the world. But you know what? I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Spanish. Well, I speak a little bit of Spanish, but not enough to get me by. I'm not very good at speaking Portuguese or lots of other different language. Hindi, no idea. Okay. And I want to go and sell my product around the world. If I turn up to these boardrooms and I just give them a story and I talk to them, they're probably not going to understand me. And I might throw numbers, but without being able to explain it, it's not going to be very obvious. Well, guess what? That's where the bar chart comes in really handy. I can go into that room and I can show them. I trialled this product in a market in Britain. Product A sold this much. Product B sold that much. Product C sold that much. When I introduced my product, Product X, look at the sales. Now, you do not need to speak Chinese, you do not need to speak English, you don't even need to be from this earth. An alien could come down and it would be clear to them that that is the biggest selling product. It is getting your information across in a really clear way. And then, thankfully, these people are going to pay me millions, I'm going to be rich. This is a really important life skill, understanding how to use bar charts. Not just in business, but in all sorts of ways to express data to people. When we look on the news, often we see all sorts of charts that show us information. You might have seen, and it's not a bar chart, but you might have seen this chart on the news quite a lot, okay? And it looks a bit like this, and then there's another one next to it that looks a bit like that. It all links into statistics, and it's showing the difference uh, between having a lockdown situation and not having a lockdown and it shows you the problems with coronavirus would coronavirus would really increase under this situation it shows you that that is as much as the nhs can cope if everyone was out mingling about and going to each other's houses and not staying in lockdown and not doing it properly the nhs would get overwhelmed but if we all stayed indoors even though it would last a bit longer the nhs would be able to deal with all the situation the bar chart shows me the information and makes it clear to me well, it's not a bar chart, this, by the way, it's a line graph. So that's a line graph. But we're looking at bar charts today. Right, so this is what I am going to do for my bar chart. I want to find out about mini beasts in my secret mini beast world. And I've been counting them. Actually, I'm going to count them now. I'm going to look for um, wood lice. Uh, I'm going to look for worms. I'm going to look for... Uh, Spiders, and I'm going to look for uh, centipedes. Okay, so off I go. I'm going to start counting. Ah, okay. I see a, a wood. Oh, actually, there's two wood lights there. Oh, look, there's a spider. Stick it back. Okay, I've got a worm. Oh, another two wood lights. 
There we go. Oh, there's a centipede. Let's have a look in there. Oh gosh, that's another spider centipede. I'm going to just carry this on now. Hey, look, when I got to five, I crossed that off. It's nice and easy way. Look, there's another wood louse there. Oh, another worm in the ground. Centipede, centipede. Another one. Excellent. Right, I'm going to stop there. Now, as I was going along, the reason I didn't put the numbers in straight away is because I didn't actually know the answer yet. So each time I found something, I tallied it off on my tally chart here. Now what I can do is really easily just add up. So wood lice, how many were there all together? Five and two, there were seven. How many worms? I only found three. Spiders, two. Centipedes, well, I only found four. Okay, now, I didn't find a lot of mini beasts because I didn't have a lot of time to search for it. But it doesn't matter because when you do yours later, you're going to have lots of things to search for. So, here's my bar chart down here. Well, I'm going to have to make a scale for my bar chart. Seeing as it only goes up to seven, I'm actually going to go up in one. This bottom line is zero, must always be zero. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Always go at least one over your top score. Now I'm going to put the information into my bar chart. So using a ruler, I must be using a ruler obviously for this if you do have one. Uh, wood lice, well I go up to seven with a ruler and here is wood lice. Go to worms, go along to three. Can you see how I've left a gap in between each bar chart? Really important to make it nice and clear. Go to spiders, I put wood for wood lice. Spiders, here they are, how many spiders? Two. So I get a ruler, go along to two. Brilliant. Spiders. And then centipede, C, four. So I get a ruler, go along to four. And there we go. Now, it does not look great because I haven't used a ruler, but I have tried my best to leave equal space in between each one. Actually, that's less space than that. So you need to leave equal space in between each one. What I've done is I've taken my data and I've interpreted it on a bar chart. Now anyone can see that in there straight away there's definitely more wood lice, okay? That is really obvious to anyone. It doesn't matter how old they are, what country they come from, the information is now really clear. If they didn't understand that, they must understand this. So, your job, what you are gonna do for me, you are gonna create, do you know what, shall I leave that up? No, you can rewind back to it if you need to. Um, I'm gonna leave you a challenge, okay? You are going to go around your house and you are going to count how many objects of something there are. Now this is my suggestion for you to go around and find. You can go around your house and count up books, uh, pens, uh, games, if you've got any games around the house. Oh, do you know what, should we change that to toys? Toys and uh, spoons. Okay, what you're going to do for me, go around the house, I want you to tally them up, count how many there are, how many you can find, go searching, investigate everywhere, find all those secret places. Okay, tally them up, and then I want a bar chart, show me in your house how many of each you have got. It'd be really nice if you coloured that bar chart in, gave each bar a different colour, make it look really pretty. If you want a model of what it should look like, you can rewind the video back and just pause it. I want you then to email it in to me at year. Three, that's Y3 at anglesey.dham.uk. Okay? No spaces in that email, remember. So, you're going to make a tally, you're going to make a bar chart, off you go.